So Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, uh, who was the newly elected um, representative of New York's 14th district, uh, has recently just started working at the Capitol. Uh, and her first couple of days have been fairly interesting. Uh, now, for one, she says, well, look, um, people aren't used to seeing young women of color who are actually uh, uh, congressmen, so I keep getting referred to spouse and intern events. Now, of course, she's like, that is slightly annoying, but I, hey, okay, uh, I get it. Uh, yes, maybe we should change uh, our perceptions about what a congressman actually looks like. Because basically what she's pointing out is that being in Congress, uh, especially the House of Representatives, is more of a rich man's game, right? Mostly a rich white man's game. Now, she was out there saying, hey, look, uh, I don't even get my congressional salary. How am I supposed to afford to live there? So those are real things that real people, when they actually do transition into those levels of power, face. Because it's not set up for regular working people, right? But, of course, she's not the only one that has faced this. Uh, you also have um, other members of Congress. Uh, for example, Grace Meng, who was elected in 2013, wrote on Twitter... I still get stopped in the halls and confused for a spouse or an intern. This is what happens when you're a young woman of color in Congress. But it shouldn't. I mean, she's absolutely right. And that's not just young women of color, of course. Uh, you also have uh, a uh, representative, Carlos Curbelo. Now, he says, after four years here, I still get stopped sometimes. Happens a lot when you're of the younger members. Uh, happens a lot to a lot of the younger members. It's no big deal. You'll get over it. Okay, so again, we have an issue of we have a, a view in our head of what makes up a congressman, and normally it's an older white dude. So now I'm actually really glad that so many women, and especially women of color, uh, have ran and have won their elections to the House of Representatives so that we can see more diversity in Congress and, and sort of shake up the idea of what we normally think of as your representative. Uh, for example, again, AOC, Rashida Tlaib, many others are coming into Congress. Uh, and so, look, what you have here, by the way, is a lot of new people coming in that were unexpected. A lot of younger progressive people, thanks to this, this blue wave election. So, uh, and, and that's wonderful. And now we're getting that in adjustment period. And it's kind of funny because if you look at the incoming members of the Democratic House, you'll see all these different people, different types of people, people of color, women of color, especially coming in. When you look at the Republican side, it's mainly still white and mainly still male. Kind of hilarious. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> now, here's where it gets fun, right? And slightly creepy. So now... Um, one of the issues that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has ran into since she started is people basically trying to poor shame her. Now, when she uh, made that statement, of course, about her uh, not being able to afford an apartment, Fox News jumped all over it. Conservatives jumped all over it. Uh, and that led to, of course, this. Uh, now, on Thursday, the attire of Ocasio-Cortez one of the most uh, recognizable newly elected House members, according to the Huffington Post, became the focus of certain, I guess, uh, antics. Uh, now, this is Eddie Scari, who's a reporter for the Washington Examiner. He posted a photo of Ocasio-Cortez, her backside as she's walking down the hall, uh, saying that, oh, look, you seem to be wearing, wearing a very nice outfit. It doesn't look like somebody who's struggling. Uh, in fact, he said, this is the exact quote. Hill staffer sent me this pic of Ocasio-Cortez. They took just now. I'll tell you something, that jacket and coat don't look like a girl who struggles. Uh, now, so that look, that's just part of it. Okay. Uh, it, another reason, like I said, Congress, the uh, view of people in Congress uh, who get into Congress is basically... You have to be rich uh, in order to get here. And if you're not rich, what are you doing here? Uh, now, 
Scari's tweet, of course, was immediately criticized, uh, causing many, even Dictionary.com, to chime in. Uh, I love this because when you get owned by Dictionary.com, do you know you're doing something wrong? Uh, they tweeted, girl, noun, a female child from birth to full growth. Ocasio-Cortez, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is not a girl. Not only that, you had Dictionary.com. You even had Geraldo. I know, right? Uh, Geraldo said, don't like somehow... Uh, don't like how some bitter, obsessed Republican fashion policemen are stalking Ocasio-Cortez. It's creepy. Lay off or I'll start calling you out by name. The embattled GOP needs you like a toothache. Hmm. Geraldo. Wow. Now, she, of course, responded on Twitter herself. She said, if I walked into Congress wearing a sack, they would laugh and take pictures of my backside. If I walk in with my best sale rack clothes, they laugh and take a picture of my backside. Dark hates light. That's why you tune it out. Shine bright and keep it pushing. I love that. Because she's saying, look, no matter what I do, they're going to come after me. They're going to pour, they're try to poor shame me. They're going to try to do all that stuff uh, and attack me in any fashion because they don't like what I represent. The fact that I'm actually trying to shine a light on what you're actually doing. So I love it. Uh, now... Scari, of course, after facing some of this criticism, especially getting burned by Dictionary.com, which is awesome, uh, said, oh, no, no, what do you mean? Uh, no, I, I didn't mean it that way. He said, attention, I posted this tweet earlier suggesting the incoming congressman looked well put together. Elegant, even. Despite suggestions, she struggled. This tweet was taken as something else, so I've deleted it. Mm. Now, look, you take it at face value. It just seems like somebody who tried to make a compliment. That is until, of course, you look into the history of Mr. Scari. Uh, turns out he's a bit of a creep. And he has been known for doing this. Now, uh, according to The Observer, Scari has a history of taking unwanted photos of women, most notably at parties that took place on the weekend of the White House Correspondents' Dinner. Uh, this was back in 2012. Mr. Scari surreptitiously snapped two shots of women's posteriors and posted the photos on Fishbowl DC. Now, Fishbowl DC is uh, the media gossip blog owned by the New York-based web company Media Bistro. So, he's like, I guess his job was taking pictures of women's butts uh, at parties. What what a job, right? You know, here's what he said about the uh, about those women in those pictures. He said the pink one is particularly bulbous. Mr. Scarry wrote of one of the women who's uh, behind he secretly captured on, tam on camera. He said, but the lumpy gray one takes the cake and eats it too. I'm just saying it. That's what this guy is writing. That's what this guy apparently, that's what his job is. Taking pictures of women's butts. Who obviously don't want them, their butts to be taken picture of, right? So, a bit of a pervy guy, right? Now, in tw August of 2012, he lorded outside the Supreme Court as justices considered the constitutionality of the ACA. There, Mr. Scarry took pictures of what he called weird sightings, which, surprise, surprise, or not really, ended up being pictures of women's big butts. Uh, in fact, he wrote, This big butt, one of many that made an already cramped event that much smaller. He wrote of uh, uh, after posting one picture, another picture, he said, another big butt. And after the last picture of the series, he wrote, and one final series of big butts. Apparently, he likes taking pictures of big butts and he cannot lie. It is no, lo it is no wonder that he works for the Washington Examiner because he likes to examine butts. Uh, and finally, he seems like a real rear guard in the field of journalism. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop myself. Okay, but that's the kind of creepiness that we're dealing with. So no, it wasn't a one-off compliment. This is what this guy does. He is he's known as the butt snapper because he's going around taking pictures of people's butts, and he should not be allowed uh, on capital grounds because he's a serious pervert. That is what 
these young women of color, by the way, have to deal with when they get into Congress. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc. We're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYT Nation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.